Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Sofia Shapushnikova, uh, and I worked uh, for last three months as a research intern at Vector Institute. So today, uh, today I'm going to uh, tell you about uh, methods uh, for reducing uh, hallucinations in uh, large language models. So uh, let's start with the background. So I'll tell you what hallucinations is. Uh, so uh, we have uh, large language models, and uh, I think if you use them often, you should notice that uh, outputs uh, may sound uh, very plausible, but uh, either factually incorrect or just unrelated to given context. This is called hallucinations. For example, uh, we got input uh, about George Washington who invented cotton gin, but this is not true because uh, it was invented uh, by uh, Ellie Whitney. Uh, so uh, why models uh, can't be just honest? Uh, because uh, LLM's knowledge is uh, defined uh, by its training set, and uh, it may include fictional content or beliefs, but uh, even without this, uh, we have troubles uh, such as LLMs uh, not optimized to say, I don't know, but they just don't have enough information. So they can be honest because they just don't know. Uh, so uh, there are different ways uh, to reduce uh, hallucinations. I will tell uh, you about them later. But uh, first, uh, I should uh, tell you the concept of uh, like uh, fine-tuning large language model on like medical contact and uh, let you uh, like deep dive into my project. Uh, so uh, I work at one lab and uh, their uh, clinical camel was trained. Uh, well, clinical camel is a medical language model, uh, which is um, like based on dialogue uh, based uh, conversations. Uh, so it can help you like as a doctor or be a helpful tool for doctors, um, like give you some advices about medicine and stuff like this. Yeah, so it was uh, trained on uh, 1, 000, uh, 100,000 synthetic dialogues um, generated uh, with uh, dialogue-based knowledge encoding and uh, also USML e questions and uh, shared GPT data set. So it outperforms uh, GPT 3.5 on uh, United States medical uh, licenses. Uh, and also, unfortunately, it is prone to hallucinations, uh, which pose a significant obstacle uh, in safety critical uh, settings. And that's why uh, we cannot use it instead of doctor yet. Uh, so uh, my goal in this research project was to uh, like find uh, the best solution uh, to reduce hallucinations uh, for like medical domain, uh, specifically to like improve this clinical camel, not to provide hallucinations. So uh, how can we do this? Uh, the first approach is just for fine tuning LLMs. So this is obvious. We can just um, well extend the information. But what's the problem with solution? Uh, there are a lot of new documents uh, arrive often and you cannot fine tune over and over again very often because um, it takes uh, time and also it's quite costly. So there is a approach retrieval augmented generation, uh, which is like a combination of uh, Mm, retrieving of documents uh, from uh, like a vector database and uh, generation with a model. And also uh, there is like QLR approach, uh, which is like uh, uh, appeared very recent, um, specifically like this spring. So this is like efficient fine tuning approach for quantized uh, LLMs. So let's start with uh, retrieval augmented generation. Uh, because uh, like we also have we already um, we already have fine tuned LLM which is clinical camel and now we want uh, to add retrieval augmented generation to it so that it's not uh, hallucinating. So uh, we have uh, two types of knowledges uh, in terms of like uh, intelligent system. Uh, first is parametric knowledge, 
which is like the knowledge of model. It can be found within uh, weights, values, and parameters uh, that constitute the model. Uh, Non-parametric knowledge uh, is like the knowledge of search engines like Google. Uh, it is retrieved from outside sources uh, using the techniques like semantic search, like, and others. So retrieval augmented generation is just a combination of both. Uh, so when it comes to generation, uh, we search for ground truth articles that are most relevant to the query. And then uh, we allow a generator like uh, GPT or other models uh, to use those articles uh, as a reference. So there are also like more complex RAG approaches, uh, like forward looking active uh, retail augmented generation. Uh, it is a paper which uh, like arrived uh, also this uh, spring like a very uh, recent research. The idea behind it is uh, to actively uh, decide when and what to retrieve. So we iteratively use uh, past predicted sentences as queries to predict future content. And uh, the sentence uh, will be regenerated if and only if it contains low confidence tokens. Also, uh, you can ask uh, why we can just uh, like use a simple RAG approach. Uh, we already have vector database and we have a lot of documents. Uh, so what's the problem? Uh, the problem is that uh, there are like more complex generation tasks like uh, multi-hop question answering, common sense reasoning, and so on, uh, that require uh, either combination of a few sources of information. Like for example, we can find a first part of the information in document one, second uh, document two, and so on. Or uh, like uh, common sense reasoning or chain of thoughts uh, tasks uh, that require like uh, actually reasoning of the model a uh, step by step. Uh, so we can just solve it uh, that easily. So uh, what was done in my research project? First of all, uh, I've used uh, like uh, retrieval augmented generation uh, and uh, tested it with like a few different models. Uh, so I encoded Wikipedia, uh, used a pinecone to build vector database uh, and uh, used the link chain to construct uh, retrieval augmented generation. Uh, yeah, and also like uh, I built a band uh, with uh, like sentence transformers. Also, I tried uh, Ada two from OpenAI, uh, and uh, I compared results uh, with Rock and without it, uh, and benchmark on uh, USMLE. So as you can see here, um, I asked uh, models about clinical camel, which is like a project of my lab. So they should know about it. And as you can see, uh, they say that it is a son or like a medical treatment. Uh, but actually, when we added document with the information, it says the correct that clinical camel is like an uh, ongoing project at my lab, and uh, it is like a chatbot for healthcare. Okay, so what did uh, what uh, did I do next? So I uh, had a hypothesis that uh, clinical camel with uh, retrieval augmented generation should uh, like serve a be better solution. Uh, because uh, clinical camel was uh, fine-tuned on the medical documents before, and now we just add information like about uh, like novel medical uh, articles that just appeared. So uh, now I encoded uh, Wikidoc corpus, uh, which is like uh, like a Wikipedia but for medicine, and uh, built vector data set with Pinecone again. Uh, for evaluation, I needed to, to use a uh, LLM eval harness library uh, from Elotor AI. Uh, why? Because uh, like uh, we need to uh, compare um, like probabilities of model to um, choose the correct answer. Well, uh, the USMLE, uh, which is like a medical licenses text, uh, is like multi-choice question answering uh test uh or a data set so uh a medical student uh, is asked uh, one uh, question and uh, um, the student have to answer with uh, either a b c or d letter uh so uh i uh, constructed like the pipeline to um, evaluate what is the probability of model to answer a b c or d and uh, chose like the most uh, like uh, solution and then like uh, compared on uh, correct answers. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, it basically worked uh, well 
but uh, not that good as um, uh, we would wish it to work because uh, like for medical domain, we need uh, like everything to be very and very um, like high, high quality, uh, very like high uh, F1 score. So I will uh, be doing the next steps, which is uh, using uh, QLORA approach for efficient fine tuning of quantized LLMs. Uh, and uh, I will try to fine tune uh, like this clinical camel model on the task of retail augmented generation. So it uh, teaches to do this uh, better. So by reducing memory, uh, making uh, the process more efficient, uh, like I will be able to like with limited, uh, uh, more limited resources, by fine tune my uh, large language model. Uh, and uh, also, uh, uh, there is a, a, a way to uh, improve the project is uh, to basically uh, find uh, find or construct a better benchmarking data set uh, because uh, USMLE is just like medical licensed test and uh, uh, we need like some tricky questions uh, or like more complex questions. It should be like a combination of few data sets or uh, like other new data sets and uh, right now, uh, uh, like uh, so there are people in my lab who are working on like new data sets. So I will be a bit, uh, able to uh, like uh, do benchmarking on it uh, when uh, like preparing the paper. Uh, so uh, thank you a lot for listening to me. Um, any questions? So, uh... Yeah, I have one question. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, so uh, my first question is that um, <clears throat> can you a little bit talk about the infrastructure? Like, because I know you use Lama B and uh, this QLORA, that how much computational resources uh, you used. Second question for the benchmarking, how did you uh, prepare this um, a test set? I mean, is there any specific format or technique you use to create the test set for this particular experiment? Uh, okay, sure. Uh, so for uh, computer resources, I used a uh, vector uh, like cluster. So uh, clinical camel is actually a very uh, huge uh, model. So I couldn't uh, even place it on the 50 uh, gigabytes of memory. So I used uh, like uh, uh, separate uh, like part of cluster which contained like 100 uh, gigabytes of memory uh, loaded uh, model there and then worked uh, on this uh, part that has uh, 50 gigabytes so and also uh, for uh, like um, for working with clinical camel I had uh, to uh, like parallel uh, it on GPUs and also like to quantize the, uh, when the, doing benchmark because uh, like it's very, actually very huge. Uh, yeah, so the question, the second question was about like test set. Uh, so uh, as for Wikidoc, uh, like there are like two possibilities. The first is like to parse uh, actual Wikidoc and uh, construct a test, uh, tra uh, like test well, the set from it, uh, but uh, I found uh, like uh, a set on hugging face, which is not perfect, but uh, I could use it uh, to like uh, save more time. Uh, so this is also uh, like a way to improve this project is to actually fully scrape uh, this uh, database. So yeah. Yeah, th thank you very much. That's an amazing presentation. Thank you. Sakhar, thank you very much. It's indeed a very interesting presentation and the project itself is quite uh, transformational if it comes through the way you have envisaged it. My question to you are two questions. One, uh, do you uh, have any thoughts on what would be the use cases, downstream use cases of this uh, project? Second question is, uh, you mentioned about using QLORA and definitely it is uh, a recent uh, technique which is available. How do you think, I mean, it's connected to the question which uh, Shani asked earlier. How do you think by using QLORA, we'll be able to reduce the compute requirements and it would help uh, whenever you connect the two in terms of the use cases uh, when people will be using uh, what you're trying to create. 
Thank you. Okay. Thank you for questions. Uh, so about use cases, uh, like uh, my lab is uh, integrated, like uh, and has like uh, like contacts with like hospitals, and uh, it is possible to uh, when we reach a good uh, like uh, results. It will be integrated with Clinical Camel, which is like a chatbot. So uh, people could uh, talk with this uh, chatbot, uh, like people do talk with ChatGPT, but now they can talk about like their symptoms and uh, it will help them to uh, define maybe um, to which doctor to do you need to go or like which medicine you can take or maybe you need just like uh, take uh, like water or something just get rest so it should help you to uh, like do first first step in your like care uh as for culora uh that i mentioned uh so uh this will be just next step so uh this is not done yet but uh i think that uh, this should uh, like uh, make it like more efficient and uh, uh and yeah i will be able to um, use uh, vector resources and uh like with it um like finish this or um, you have some spe more specific questions I'm not, I'm good. thank you very much really appreciate your presentation thanks thank you hey amir we'll take your question but be quick Okay, sure. Thank you for the presentation. So I just wanted to ask about, uh, you mentioned that you're using RAG to reduce the hallucination of the model. So uh, I was wondering what was the, like the outcome? Like, did it actually reduce the hallucination of the model when you use RAG? And why do you think this is actually helping with the problem of hallucination in particular? Uh, yeah, so why is it helping? Because uh, like one of the problems of uh, hallucination is of the lack of knowledge. And now, as you can see on the screenshot, uh, yeah, it helps uh, with uh, like extending the knowledge of model. Now we can uh, answer about like questions about clinical camel. Uh, but uh, there are more complex questions. Uh, like there are tasks like uh, look form, question answering, common sense reasoning. Uh, when I asked, uh, for example, clinical camel uh, or, so with a uh, rug, so how much uh, or, or like how many PhD students are there in my lab? So it had to just count them and the counting uh, actually was wrong uh, because uh, this require more uh, like complex reasoning. Uh, so for that, uh, we need to, to use uh, like more complex rug approaches. Uh, those are, are like flare or even like more complex. Um, uh, yeah, so it should like at least uh, like partially um, reduce hallucinations. Also, uh, it is very useful to optimize, uh, well, the LLM to say, honestly, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, there, there is also a good approach with uh, RLHF. So we can uh, somehow um, make the model more often say I don't know and uh, like uh, reward it for that. Uh, and then uh, we will like uh, more often make it like, mm, you need at least say I don't know if you don't know, right? This is not hallucinations. This is just a mm, honest answer. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. 